New Mexico Canacast. Everything New Mexico, everything Kansas. Hello, everybody. It's the New Mexico Canacast. Everything New Mexico and everything cannabis. Well, welcome to our show. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And uh, yeah, you know the guy beside me, don't you? I hope so. Who is it? What's up, everybody? It's Chad. Um, we're here again. I know it says Josh McCurdy in the corner right here, but um, it's Chad. Um, we're here again. Josh is actually out of quarantine, so we're on the same frame this time this week. Um, but we do have a guest with us, and we'll introduce her in one second. So, Shannon, go ahead and introduce yourself, and we'll go on ahead. What's up, everyone? Thanks for being with us once again. I'm Shannon Jaramillo, and here with my buddies from the southern part of the state, Josh and Chad. And today we have Amanda Fratzola with us. We'll go ahead and let Amanda introduce herself. Take it away. Hello, NM. It's, uh, I'm really excited to be here today. And uh, thanks to Josh, Chad, and of course, Shannon, my good bud, uh, for bringing me on today. Um, I, I've been in the industry for a long time, since 2012. I work at Albuquerque Integrative Medicine. Um, I've been there for 12 years now. And um, I have a, a lot of experience in the industry, specifically working with the patient aspect of it. Um, our business, of course, ancillary to the cannabis industry, has worked specifically for the medical community. But of course, now that Recreational is here, um, we want to make sure that the community is supported through the education and resources, not only by getting their medical cannabis card and understanding those benefits, but of course, understanding the educational piece of using cannabis, whether you're medicinally using it or recreationally are using it, there's a safety component. And um, I want to make sure that that's something we advocate for in the community. Awesome. Thank you. Wonderful things. Wonderful things. So yeah, so we have, we have a unique episode talking about access and some rules and regs and the laws and everything else. Uh, too much fun because there's there's been a few things like, like I said, it's a new industry. So we have to help you know, educate and self-police in, in, in essence. Um, a lot of people get excited about the cannabis industry, right? Uh, I've, I've got to see it myself, especially the medical industry uh, when I was in Oklahoma. Um, you know, like, like my mother and my stepfather didn't have any idea what the rules and regs were. You know, they just got excited and stuff. So I can understand how a lot of stuff gets looked over sometimes. And um, so, so just be aware that what we're talking on the show, we understand we're real people. So uh, we're just trying to make the, the, the program and our recreational program, medical program, all better with all things here in New Mexico. So, uh, yeah, so there's been a little rumors of uh, maybe uh, patients not be able to get their medicine in certain uh, retail establishments and stuff. Um, so we're, we're more investigating that. I'm going to talk about that and how, you know, there's, there's like rules and regs to talk about it. So. Chad, do you want to get all in the in, in the IT stuff about it, all the numbers? Yeah, so um, what, what Josh was really talking about is um, <clears throat> within the law and everything, there's the law, and then the law allows the CCD to do things. And if the CCD is allowed to do it and is backed by the law, well, you have to follow it. Um, and some people don't necessarily know that. So right now, um, dispensaries are required 25% of what they sell um, to medical cannabis patients right now. And if they don't, well, you know, you're kind of breaking the law and you could get into a lot of trouble. I'm not too sure what the punishment is for that. It could just be breaking a rule, which would be a fine. But if you break the law, they could possibly take your license. Um, right now, you know, there's, there's a huge issue with adequate supply for patients and, you know, patients being unable to do this and that. Um, but I don't really want to go too far into it because Amanda actually has more information on the story that'll actually make more sense why I'm mentioning this in the first place. So Amanda, please go ahead and tell the story that you were telling us right before the show. Sure. So um, specifically, we, we help patients get their medical cannabis card and work very closely with caregivers who are assisting patients or qualified patients to obtain their cannabis if they're unable to do so. And in this particular situation, um, a caregiver entered into a newly established dispensary and was looking to purchase their, the medicine for their patient who happened to be his autistic son. And this particular person um, or dispensary let him know that uh, cannabis was cannabis and that there was no difference between purchasing a recreational or selling to a rec patient versus selling to a medical patient. And that certainly isn't true. Now, we all know that there are differences usually in some medical aspect. A lot of them will deal with more CBD-based products with the THC to counteract some psychoactivity, or particularly some would need the higher THC to help 
um, with their management of symptoms. Now, in this situation, um, the patient was patient and caregiver were very upset that they weren't able to use the benefits allowed to them being a medical cannabis patient to purchase their cannabis. And it's very easy for someone to say, well, you could go to another dispensary or you could go down the street or you could find someone else that would serve you. But that simply isn't what the law and the regulations are set to do. They are set to allow patients and caregivers and reciprocal patients to be able to enter into a cannabis establishment and purchase their medicine at any time. Now, there are, of course, limits in terms of how much cannabis each dispensary would allocate for this particular situation, but walking into a dispensary and them telling you it simply isn't available is not an option. And so I do think, and like I mentioned to you beforehand, that there is an educational piece and there's a piece in there that the CDC may be overlooked. I mean, they have a lot of things going on. They have a lot of, of moving parts that are happening right now with the, the legalization of cannabis. And we certainly can understand that, but because we've been made aware of some of these issues, it's important that we speak out ahead of the curve. So we can try to curb possible greater shortages for patients that they're already experiencing now. Oh yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Shannon, go ahead. I think you're gonna say something. Well, I was just going to say that that was well put. And I think that a, a lot of it does have to do with, um, you know, as we mentioned before, and Josh said, we are people, we get it right. And everybody kind of catching up to the marketplace and the learning curve. And, you know, and, and when I look at the industry and I understand how many people are operating without reading the law and the regulations, there's a lot of them because naturally th that's hard to do. And, and they're hiring people. Uh, to interpret that stuff for them. And so, but I do see too that um, that there's just also a culture and some dispensaries may just think that's their culture and they may not be aware of it, right? And so we're, we're trying to, you know, there's a lot of layers in there and I love that you're bringing it up and I hate to hear of, of patients not getting access to their medicine, right? So I think this is an important topic and I'm interested to, to kind of deep dive with everybody and, and even let's talk about, you know, where is this in the, in the Cannabis Regulation Act? And if you guys are listening and, and watching and you have some information or you're interpreting it somehow, please do hit us up because this conversation is for you and, and there's, you know, we're interpreting it together basically and then we want to apply it. But as a patient, you know, I definitely would, would feel put off if I walked in somewhere and that happened to me. So I just sure. want to put that out there, right? So, but thanks for being here, Amanda. This is great information. I'm happy to be here. And I, I just, like I said, I want to make sure that we can get this out, you know, before things start getting to the point of no return and yeah. patients are being turned away at the masses or dispensaries are just have gotten away with something for so long, even though it's in the regulations, it's hard to kind of turn back time when somebody doesn't have something that they direly need, like their medication, it could be dangerous. Yeah. for people and, and just fyi you do it in my area i'll come visit you <laughs> hey, you're actually you're in my area because i'm i'm a las cruces girl myself okay um so you're in my hood i just you know up here right now yeah <laughs> you're in my hood i'm lending i'm being lent out there you go. <laughs> oh, I, I, under, I understand that I, that's how i got to the flatlands here yep i was in the mountains <laughs> <laughs> and it's like 110 degrees here oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot to love it's okay i love the plant so so let's dissect this a little <laughs> bit when we're talking about plant. what's up anything for the plant yes, yeah exactly anything for the plant you know and that's that's a lot of sacrifices oh lot investments of all investments oh yeah I all investments. yeah it's not a sacrifice it's an <laughs> investment it's an investment of the cannabis plant and just moving it forward is is an industry and everything else as a whole so where's the numbers at Let, like, and if you're a lawyer listening and would like to be on the New Mexico Canada cast, please uh, email us. We'd love to hear your take on some of these stuff because we're not yeah. lawyers. This is our take, as Shannon said. You know, um, it's not, you know, an official whatever. But if the CCD does probably say that, and it, it, it is an official, you know, thing. So the CCD has ruled that, you know, 25% of your sales, um, and Amanda could probably read it from the site, um, you do have to reserve that. And it's because in the statute, we read it before the show and we all were reading it and kind of, you know, debating back and forth of what they, you thought or, you know, how you take it. And the, the law says that the CCD may promulgate rules and they did. Um, so therefore it is backed by law. So 
dispensaries right now are required by law and rule to reserve 25%. So Amanda, if you want, go ahead and please read it from the site. Uh, do you want the NMAC part? I mean, just the, the little brief about. summary you read us, you know, that it just uh, let me let, let me interrupt. I'll start yeah. with the uh, with the cannabis regulation act, Amanda. Go ahead, do you, that cool. then. Cool. Uh, you read and, and, yeah. and just real quick, CCD. Anybody out there listening from the CCD? You want to get on and explain it to us a little more clearly? We'd love to have you too. That'd be great. That's a, <laughs> that's, a that's that's a great point there. Uh, so I'm in the cannabis regulation act, otherwise known as House Bill Two. And if you go to section seven, commercial cannabis activity licensing, application issuance and denial of license, it's early on in the document, page 20, oh, I'm sorry, actually go to page 30. And section five says, allow commercial cannabis activity retail sales no later than April 1st, otherwise activities authorized by the Cannabis Regulation Act or medical cannabis program as of the time of licensure, so long as a minimum of 25% of monthly cannabis sales are to qualified patients, primary caregivers, reciprocal participants, or sold wholesale to other licensees that meet or exceed the 25% sales to qualified patients, primary caregivers, and reciprocal participants until December 31st, 2022. That's word for word. And then that Part right there gives the authority for the Cannabis Control Division to promulgate the rules or make known the rules that Amanda will read in the New Mexico Administrative Code. Take it away, Amanda. So um, addressing the shortage of the medical cannabis, upon a division allowing commercial cannabis retail sales, cannabis retail establishments shall make reasonable efforts to sell a minimum of 25% of their monthly cannabis sales to qualified patients, caregivers, and reciprocal patients or to another licensed retail establishment that meet or exceed the 25% sale. Um, that particularly is going to be uh, in MAC 16.8.8.11. So pretty much they just echoed the law. Basically they echoed the law, which would go that if they, if you named it twice, it's probably legit. <laughs> well, right. And here's for everybody who doesn't like word math problems, all right? So that'd be one-fourth of your inventory or a quarter of your inventory. I hate doing I'm trying to help people. You know, no, no, some people no, hate word yeah, problems. I, I'm just trying to, you know what I mean? So like one-fourth again of your inventory or a quarter of your inventory. So, you know, if you, you, had, you had four pieces, you take one and then you have three left over, all right? Just, just, just saying that that's how it works. I mean, I will get some Skittles or something on if I need to. <laughs> Actually, the regulation is titled Addressing a Shortage of Medical Cannabis. So that's what the concept is, is we are addressing the potential shortage that the 140 and growing patients may incur as we legalize and commercialize cannabis for adult use. So yeah, um, yeah very interesting. Go, you're, you're up, Chad. I want to hear from you. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the law, you know, further kind of solidifies it even more by stating that, you know, patients can't be charged tax. And if you are charged tax, that means you're being charged as a recreational patient. So it just kind of ties it in more and just solidifies it that medical patients are going to be taken care of at some point somewhere. No taxes, 25%. I mean, that's reasonable. It's going down to 10%, I think, is it in December? Um, you know, which, you know, maybe in statute, maybe in statute would need to be changed in January. Maybe they need to keep it at 25% for, for longer. Um, but, you know, I'm glad that patients aren't paying taxes. You know, I'm a patient. Josh is a patient. Uh, I think both of you are patients as well. And, you know, not paying taxes, you know, helps a lot, helps a lot of people out in the state, you know, and, and also I, being able to grow. And I want to say too, there's a select group of people. So the recreational program allows for people the age of 21 and over to access cannabis. So there's a group of people that are below that, that are 21 and younger, who are in the medical cannabis program or pursuant of medical cannabis as opposed to other medications. And so if dispensaries are going to start limiting or not providing medical cannabis, then the patients that are in that category, which are under 21, they're not even going to have access to recreational cannabis. Now, I'm not talking about people getting their, their mother's edibles and using it. I'm talking about patients who are have epilepsy, patients who have severe, severe chronic pain that started as children due to an accident or, or some birth defect. And so it's important that people continue to provide the medical cannabis 
because not everybody has access to recreational. Oh yeah, definitely. Sorry, my dog's drinking water and I didn't want you to have to hear that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's my problem. Josh has the, the drawn on a diagram here. Right? Oh, sorry. Here, yeah, here you go. Here you go. A little posty note on what a quarter is. And so, <laughs> so, so if you needed to make your bins or whatever, shelving, you know, shelve it up 25%. I'm just trying to help y'all help everybody else. Help us all. We appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate it. Exactly. So some and right now, just some no more numbers, numbers, guys. A lot of the sales, recreational is majority of uh, mostly everybody's sales. It's about 60% recreational, about 40% medical. So why would you exclude 40% of your sales? That's a really, really big chunk. Yeah, 60% is a majority. But if you're losing out on 40% of anything, like lot. if you're missing 40% of your brain, you, you might be a potato. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can think of is that because I'm with these business owners as they're setting up and I know you guys are working with some too. I don't know, uh, uh, on the retail side, some of the conversations that you get with them, um, number one, if they're new to the market, they're new to the state, okay, let's say they're, or they're just new to, to the industry, um, they're actually fighting for a piece of that 140,000 patients right now because they may not have a natural market. They may have a warm market. Some of them are writing in on their hemp companies and they've got a warm market of patients that they can like transition. And I noticed that some of them too, and I'm just always thinking about these types of layers there. They don't know some of them uh, about the medical program. So there's no baseline there. And they're like, oh, so how do we tell a patient to go get their card? And that's an extra step of work for them. And I'm going to tell you, it's it, it's all these things combined swirling around with no real support from, from our state right now, except for some, you know, seminars and these little pieces that they're having to kind of still dig through. And so when I look at it and I think of these people going through this moment and I've been part of this moment with them, I'm like, okay, I kind of get it because they're trying to learn what types of customers can they take in? How do they ID them? Okay. They have to register through the patient registry. We got to understand that. And how do you do reciprocal? I have to register my business to do that. And there's all these like extra steps for the noobs, right? But the old schools and the grandfathers, they already had that in place. So they're already, you know, way ahead of the curve. And also they control the medical cannabis market, the flower, just for now though. That's why I said it's a matter of timing. Um, but I just want to throw that on the table because those are the those are kind of like the business pieces of it on the back end. And then the higher the quality, um, the higher THC content is mostly going to medical patients. And a lot of these new companies flat out can't afford freaking 3000 per pound. It's like 25, 27 to 3,500 per pound. So I want to throw all that in there and kind of just let's, let's mess around with it. You know, what do you guys think? Oh, I can't wait to sell $3,500 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> Jeez. don't we all there's that <laughs> i said don't we all <laughs> right no but th those are really good points to make um and you know but i i think it really boils down to a lot of um uneducation on, on the side sure. of you know new producers because you know this isn't happening from the legacy side you know from the legacy producers you know that, that are you know from the and legacy is kind of confusing because outside of new mexico legacy is actually the black market and so when we say oh, legacy yeah. you know producers in new it's mexico not Huh? It's not already. <laughs> <laughs> the, the legacy. Well, I've listened to your podcast. It's not already. No. Yeah, the, the dirty thirty. You know, the legacy <laughs> equals dirty thirty. Yeah, exactly. In New Mexico. Yeah. Well, I can it, say I'm getting a lot of class ideas from this episode. That's for damn sure, right? And <laughs> wow. We did dispensary management training, and and I realized breaking down those regs was gold to some of these newbies, right? So. Uh, yeah, I just think I just think the more support around that education, the more people like Amanda that show up and, and speak out and and there are processes around this. So patients knowing those processes are important. Well, that's a good point. Like you have to show up like I, I've been in the advocacy world for, I don't know, a couple of years. And, um, you know, <laughs> it, I, I, yeah, I'll tell you what, there's one there's one thing that's consistent in, in all the years of advocating. Patients never showed up bottom line like they really didn't like they would show up on facebook and key keyboard warrior the heck out of me um for everything i didn't say right um but so you know i'm just like you, you got to show up like you just um you know be honest like we're, we're still running around the state right now going to different meetings in different counties and cities and everything else and and some of these places affect our businesses some mm -hmm. of them don't 
Uh, some of them, to be honest with you, I just want to get at them just to help educate them because I think they're making it a lot harder. Um, you, you know what I mean? For businesses and stuff, just in, in that, in that level. And like we said, they, they got enough issues, right? $3,000 pounds, uh, figuring out the rules, dealing with bio track, um, making sure the city's going to do something nice. you you already got a stigma on you. Uh, when you enter the cannabis industry, everybody, you're already going uphill, right? There is no downhill here. This is straight uphill. And then you get in the, even the, the black market was like this, the legal market's like this. <laughs> and, and that is the learning curve. So I'm going to be honest with you. Like if you invest money in to learn this stuff and, and get this done, it, it will save you tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. It depends how big you are, right? Or how, how far you go. Uh, it, it might make you a millionaire that you invested in five to $10,000 in the training. There you go. I, really? Yeah, because I if mean, you get popped and your business gets shut down, you'll never be a millionaire. Sorry. I'm sorry. And I know everybody gets to the cannabis to be a millionaire, right? That's what we do. Right. Well, that that's the whole point there is like, we're building sustainable uh, businesses right now. It's vague enough for people to kind of learn. And I would use that as a learning moment rather than a loopholing moment where you just continue loopholing forever. Right. Yeah. And so, because if you get stuck in that rut and it does cost money to do these things, it just does. Right. So, um, so that, I think that's the bottom line there is not, not going around some of these things and understanding this or shit, just listen to our podcast and understand it with us. We'll, we'll help you. <laughs> well, and, and branding, right. I, I've been fortunate enough at, in the game again, with advocating that I've talked to owners where, you know, I've done a live or something and, and talking about kind of ill treatment of patients or whatnot in the world. And, and I mean, it, it hurt. It, it's not very good for the brand. It actually, you know what I mean? It hurts sales and stuff overall. And, and, and right. nobody wants a negative publicity. Like nobody wants that. So, you know, so yeah, just be, help be educated. You know, I mean, yeah. And, 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 you know, if a patient tells you, Hey, you're wrong, you might just want to look at it and be like, come back tomorrow. I, I don't want to be completely wrong. I'm new at it. You know, just, just admit your mistakes at the moment and try to figure it out because yeah. the patient will, <clears throat> will be more appreciative of that. Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe the patient will give you the can of cast and you maybe go to listen, send an email, you know, ask questions. We'll help you out. No problem. And, and Amanda, you're going to say something right before Josh talk? No, I just, I think that I, I, I agree that it's not, I, I'm not sitting here trying to throw the book at anybody. Um, but I definitely think that because of the way that legalization rolled out in the fashion that it did, it didn't give business owners a lot of time. It didn't give the CCD a lot of time or the Department of Health a lot of time to really enforce or ensure that dispensaries had everything they needed. Now, I could be wrong, but I feel like that's part of the licensing process. That's something that should be a checklist item if it's something that they're enforcing on their website, um, but it happens. And I think that getting in front of you guys and talking to you guys and being able to let people know that this is something that's already happening. And if we can try to let the patients know that they do have a responsibility also, their card comes with a little bit of responsibility as a patient to be able to make sure that their medicine is going to be there for them. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Here, here's a little personal information about my advocating. Like my advocating wasn't for <clears throat> me personally at all. It was for my grandmother and other people that I met that were sick, that couldn't do things. And you know what I mean? And, and it was, uh, and it all started to be honest with you, because I got denied access from a dispensary and the closest one at that time to get cannabis from there was 187 miles, you know, it's crazy. And so, you know, you, you, you know, you might not think like, I don't need to do it or whatever, but think about your grandma. Think about somebody else's grandma. If you don't like your grandma, I don't know, you know, like, uh, yeah, oh just God. think about the people you love. And, and that's and that's kind of the true reason that that'll help your passion and, and, and maybe help you show up when you feel like, you know, that little voice in your head is like, oh, I don't need to just be like, well, I'm, I'm going to do it for little Jimmy. Game on. You know? And I and I think about that, you know, when I the, the story I told you earlier about the dad, you know, trying to help his son. I just I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, I also imagine, you know, like my grandma or your grandma walking into a dispensary looking to get medical cannabis and it took all she had to get there, you know, her one moment to get out of the house. And she just so happened to be unlucky that she walks into a dispensary that says we don't serve medical cannabis or you can still buy cannabis, but it's going to be 
at the tax price. So that's where my advocate advocacy comes in is like you said, is for those people who may not want to have the voice or maybe the fight, because think about a lot of people that are in the program are in the program for a specific reason. And a lot of them ha do have caregivers and assistants so that they can have help. And so that's where my part comes in is I want to be that help for them. Wonderful. No, that, that, that's a great point. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, I mean, to be an advocate like that, that is it right there. You know, um, you're, you're doing it to help, to help the entire program. Not, not, yeah. you know what I mean? Everybody as a whole. And, and that's, that's where it really counts. Right. And it is, it's part of showing up and, and go into these and, and, and it's it's uncomfortable conversations. It's sometimes it's uncomfortable everything. Um, but after you after you go through that uncomfortable stage and, and you know, you know what I mean, if you know it truly it's right for the patient, uh, you know, it, it usually usually comes out more positive, right? Don't don't and then don't go out of the negative way too. I, I can tell you that from personal experience. Uh, the old saying, you know, and, um, more flies with honey than vinegar. No Absolutely. joke. So <laughs> Yeah. So, so better education, um, you know what I mean? And, and nice. Yeah. So I, I'm very, like I said, I'm very interested to find out, you know, what, what dispensary it is and just go visit and, and, and nothing mean or anything like that. Just ha have a good conversation and maybe we can all figure it out for everybody. They'll be able to make 40% more money. Patients will have access. We're all winning. We're all winning. I love winning. Yeah, Don't and, and everybody will be a little happier. And, and you know what, this program can thrive because that's all we want. And we said, police, you know, self-police this industry. And that's something that's a part of it, you know, and it's not just Josh and I, you know, it's everybody going around like, Hey, you know, why aren't you guys allowing patients, you know, you know, access, you know, like that's not allowed, you know, you got a lot of access. Or why would you turn off some dispensaries to the medical patients when you have multiple in one city? What's the point of that? I mean, yeah. what, what's the benefit to, to you or to the patient or to anybody? It, it yeah. just, it, it's all about education. I, I agree 100%. Um, but I, I know that it's happening. And if we don't make it known, especially letting the departments know, which is the, de the Department of Health and the CDC, then that's where it really falls short. Because we could talk about it so we're blue in the face, but unless it actually gets to them where they have made, been made aware of it through a formal complaint and through the proper channels, then it's going to go nowhere. But, you know on YouTube. Right. <laughs> no. no, yeah, exactly. The, the formal complaint, you know, you can, you can find those paperworks on the Department of Health website. I know there's CCD stuff also on there. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's, there's options. I, I don't know. Maybe we can talk to, man, I can't call you IT Jesus nor just throws me off. Uh, <laughs> IT Jesus, the, uh, uh well okay the bald it jesus um i mean we call the young i mean you know like, maybe, like, like maybe basic young. training basic, jesus. Yeah, basic training jesus. Uh, I anyways want, i want to throw this Thanks. in too real quick there's a couple of you know noobs coming on the scene with medical backgrounds and they are like i've heard i've been in meetings recently where they're like we want to dedicate 75 percent of our cannabis to the patients right so on the flip side kudos to people that are coming on the market scene and, you know, really like taking a look at it and honoring that there's a patient community here and considering how they might be helpful to the overall like health of New Mexico and our families, right? Because I think that that we know as patients has been, you know, an issue is to not having people like focused on that. And while a lot of the grandfathered businesses either sell to other companies or they start to position for recreational, we need to have kind of that offset by, you know, new businesses coming in and being like, we are for the patients and we definitely want our culture to be patient focused and oriented. Like, so I do, I do want to mention that, that I've, I've been, you know, I've been in meetings and I've been fortunate to work with groups like that around the state. I'm working with one right now in the south, Southern part of the state, in fact. So nice. anyway, I think, I think that um, that's going to become a thing. And yeah, so I wonder, you know, what the, what, what's the difference in the two, but I think it's just culture sometimes, right? Well, oh, definitely. I think it's culture, but I also think if you look at the cannabis industry, I mean, in two, when I when I started in 2012, there was 8,000 patients in the program. There's, I mean, the final total is like one, I think as of March, it's like 133, 133, one, yeah. yeah. So it's like 134,000 patients. And in the last three years, it's exponentially grown by 20,000 patients each year in the last three years. So the 
of course, that was the whole point of getting the recreational was they use those numbers and those statistics to indicate that the use of cannabis is greater, that more people are using cannabis instead of them traveling to Colorado or traveling out of state and doing these things. Why don't we capitalize on it? And I think it's great. I think the recreational market has brought um, will bring variety. I think it'll it'll make allow people the competition to be able to say they can't just sell mediocre stuff anymore. They have to elevate. And I know you'd like that one. You're so they nice, mediocre. Yeah. I'm not saying all of it. I'm saying, you know, in, in the sense that a lot of dispensaries were doing a lot of things that weren't totally kosher and they got away with it because patients had nowhere else to go. And now that's not the case anymore. And yeah. so I I 100% back recreational in New Mexico. I think it was one of the better things. I think it could have, the rollout itself could have been a little bit smoother, but what better way to get it started and figure it out is if you're not already in it. No, so definitely. the other thing that I think is happening also, and I'll just say this and let you guys go back is the product availability right now for medical patients that they were used to getting, which are those higher dose edible products, the 250s, the 500s, are very hard to find. If they do find them, they're very, very expensive. And that's something that's also going to trickle down into the recreational kind of taking away from the medical program. But like Shannon said, there's a lot of people out there that recognize the medical program can keep you going. I mean, look at all the, the 32 dispensaries that have been doing it for the last 10, 12 years, some of them. They did just fine with just medical patients and they were only seeing 20,000 patients. And now we have 100, almost 140,000. So just a medical dispensary would be able to do just fine and be able to sleep at night also. Oh, definitely. There's actually a pharmacy here in Las Cruces that's trying to start selling cannabis in the city. I saw that. Because because actually in the law, it says that the local municipalities may um, set it to up to 300 feet. So they don't have a minimum distance that it has to be. It's just they're sitting in a distance of 300 feet. So you can set it to an inch or nothing. And so it's up to the cities and municipalities to actually say how far they can be from, uh, from a school. So, you know, like it's what it is, is the wall touches the school. Like they're literally like, you know, touching each other. And that's like the issue the city has, but it's a pharmacy. I mean, they sell Vicodin and, you know, legal meth and cocaine out that, you know, that place. I was about to use some street yeah. and, you know, <laughs> but, you know, let me stop myself, but you know, they, they pretty much are selling these things and they're complaining about cannabis now. So, I mean, let's, let's really reevaluate this, you know, like this is medicine, you know, this is something, and at least a pharmacy is actually, you know, selling it. And, and I drove by it yesterday, and I'm going to say it. I think we should move the school. What the heck is a school doing downtown? I, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We yeah, can do something else cooler with what that. Is yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just saying. Just my two cents. I think it's a charter school. That's what, yeah. And they can, you know, yeah. It's a charter school. Oh, is it? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, boop. It's just a regular building. So, but anyway, guys, um, this is all great conversations and everything. We're at the 30 minute mark and everything for the show. So I really appreciate you coming on, Amanda. This is a yeah. really great conversation. I appreciate you bringing it up. You know, it really made me open up the, you know, law again and read the law rules and, you know, get all this old nostalgic feeling from back in the day of Josh and I running around the state and, you know, being on task forces and stuff. And, uh, you know, every January having to read the bills. So it's just really cool to, you know, kind of just get back into it. So I appreciate that. And just, you know, really bringing up an issue that, you know, affects a lot of the people in the state, you know, might affect more people down in Sunland Park, you know, somewhere that Josh and I are operating. So, um, you know, it might be somewhere that we have to go visit. Is it you guys? It's not you guys, right? Oh, no, no, no we're not even open yet. <laughs> no, like, yeah, yeah. So Somebody, we're selling I'm to nobody. I about to say somebody whoop my ass if I denied patients. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean it would just be karma. Come on, yeah, now. oh yeah, it yeah, would. yeah. I, I could, I couldn't imagine. I, I, I like, I couldn't even imagine thinking that. Like, be all, well, what? You're a patient? <laughs> I couldn't imagine it. Yeah, I could. Those keyboard warriors would be ready. Oh yeah, all, all the in the keyboards and yeah, yeah. just angry. Yeah. Well, it, I just yeah, I'm so far from that. Like, you know what I mean? That I, I couldn't even imagine. Like, didn't like. Why would you limit patients? And I, there's no way, there's no way I would deny any type of patient of anything. So yeah, if anything, they get in front of the line and all that. Oh customer, no, so, yeah, they're gonna get know. the VIP. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, the red carpet. Yeah. Run up the front, get a little siren for him. I got the fun pass. I got the fun pass. Yeah.
Uh oh, Shannon, I think you're on mute. You're muted. Yeah, I did that because I have a bird in the background and I didn't want our podcast to <laughs> oh, like I love this parrot in the background. Anyway, uh, so I was saying that uh, I was actually mouthing, hoping you guys would get that uh, basically that we make up about 6.7, almost 7% as a patient population of New Mexico, right? May not seem like a lot. It's a drop in the bucket and we're a P on all the department's plates compared to what everybody's dealing with. But the reality is, is that patients are the reason we have legalization in the state of New Mexico and nationwide. And so let's just get to the bottom line of this. And I think the message from my heart, from our hearts and our all the work that we've done together in the state is like you know let's put the patients first and there's a lot of back that but we would hope that the businesses setting up here want to learn more about how to do that because that's where their heart is too we're building a community and these people are getting well because of the medicine and the plants right so i want to i want to throw that out there but i love when chad gives us time because I'm picturing like that big thing just yanking us out and then there's, or like an eject button and he just ejects us out of our seats. He's like, <laughs> sorry, I gotta go by. <laughs> and that's a wrap guys. And then I just fly out. All right, cut, we're done for the day. <laughs> right. But no, really, we are done for the day. So they, we appreciate you guys being here with us. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you, everybody, again. Um, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys again next week, same time. Uh, everybody, go ahead and say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Later. <laughs>